Hello guys and welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. Now in this video I would like to compare different uh, rocket types and show their strength and weaknesses. You might have also seen in my Let's Play series that I faced some issues with ha not having enough range uh, on my rockets, so I basically uh, checked out the mechanics behind that and that's what I'm going to share with you in this video. So as you can see I've already set up a few uh, rockets down here, it's seven rockets, each one has a different engine as you can see, and that's all the different engines uh, which are currently into the game, so there's no engine missing here. And I'm going from the left uh, side, from the first available engines uh, to the end game engines, and yeah, showcasing some basic mechanics behind it. As you can see on the very left uh, we have the carbon dioxide engine. It consumes, as it says, carbon dioxide and provides a range of 6. Yeah, you can see that here. The trip distance would be 6 tiles. So realistically if you want to go back you can only uh, go 3 tiles with that kind of engine. Now I figured out there's a very important uh, mechanic behind this as well. It actually uh, doesn't matter how many, how many uh, modules you have on your uh, engine. As you can see, I added, just added a large cargo bay and the range is still six tiles, so no change here. The only thing that has changed is the speed of the rocket. You can also see that in the help. Uh, basically, the game uses a mechanic called burden and compares that or with engine power. So the more engine power you have and the less burden, you're, you're f the faster your rocket is gonna travel. And of course that counts the other way around, so you should always make sure that you only carry the modules uh, on the journey that you actually need. So I'm gonna change that back and make it a slow uh, or the simplest rocket possible. As you can see, uh, as this one is running from carbon dioxide, it does not need any additional tanks or even not even an oxidizer. And that is already changing uh, for the next rocket. As you can see, this one is the sugar engine. It requires sucrose to be transported into this engine and also some, yeah, uh, oxidizer. I reckon to use the small solid oxidizer tank here because that's the thing you have available in the early game as well and I would also rec uh, recommend you to use fertilizer instead of oxalide as, as an oxidizer because fertilizer is easier to produce and also um, easier to handle as it doesn't off gas during the tra travel. You can of course use something like a auto sweeper to transport your materials up here or you can do that with uh, duplicant labor. So as you can see this uh, rocket is also a little higher than the carbon uh, rocket so to say and that is because we need this oxidizer tank and the engine itself is a little taller. So we are consuming 8 out of 16 in height that means uh, we can only add a limited amount of yeah, further modules to this rocket. But keep in mind that the carbon uh, engine only provides a height of 5. So here we have 5 free height slots so to say. And on this uh, rocket we have 8 uh, height slots available already. So that's a decent increase. And let's check the range also. It's the same as the carbon engine. It also provides a trip distance of 6 tiles maximum or 3 tiles if you want to return actually. Going further with the small petroleum engine, as you can see this one has a height of 20 and if you build it the smallest possible way you will consume 9 height slots so to say out of the 20 so you have 11 available. Uh, this one requires petroleum to be pumped in as you can see here and also you need some kind of a yeah, uh, oxidizer tank. 
I reckon to use the small uh, solid oxidizer tank for this one as well, as you only need a mass of 450 kilograms, as you always need uh, the same amount of fuel and oxidizer for your rocket. So checking the range here as well, this one provides a range of 10, as you can see that's 4 more than the other two rockets already shown. So this is good enough to, no, maybe, let's check on the map. So we can't go to this uh, asteroid, at least, we, at least we can't return from that one. Uh, but this one would be fine, so we are capable of reaching the second furthest, or the second closest asteroid uh, with this rocket. So this, I consider this already to be a good rocket for mid-game. Then, moving further, we have the steam engine. This one uh, provides a height of 25, that's quite huge already. And if you build it as small as possible away, uh, you consume 8 slots, so you have 17 available. That's quite a lot already. And as the name of the steam engine tells you already, it uh, consumes steam, which will be filled into this uh, yeah, engine compartment. As you can see, you need some gas pipes to transport it there. That's, yeah, that's maybe a little annoying about this engine. This, it's the same as with the uh, carbon engine. Um, a gas pipe can only transport a thousand grams of any gas at the time, while a liquid pipe would be able to transport 10 kilograms, so 10 times the mass which will result in yeah, the loading procedure to be way longer for every engine that yeah, runs from some kind of gas. So this is a disadvantage, definitely. And then we also have to check uh, one more set. I forgot to tell that before. We have a module engine power of 27. 27 is m a medium value, I'd, I'd say. Uh, it's providing some thrust. 31 for the small petroleum engine. 16 for the sugar engine and we have 23 for the carbon engine. Remember this one uh, de decides together with the burden you have in your rocket how fast the rocket is gonna travel. So I consider the steam engine to be a bit faster already. Then uh, uh, moving further to the next engine we have the petroleum engine Again, we need petroleum, but we won't feed that into the engine itself. We will need a large liquid fuel tank for that. There is actually no small liquid fuel tank in the game, so every time you have a liquid fuel, you will need this tank. And also, you will need a oxidizer tank. There's multiple options available. You could go with two solid oxidizer tanks, or with one large solid oxidizer tank, or you could even go with a yeah, liquid oxidizer tank. But this is not making much sense, because usually when you use that rocket you don't have um, access to super coolant, and therefore you can't actually produce uh, liquid oxygen as, for, as required for your liquid oxidizer tank. So let's check. The stats, uh, a module engine power of 48, that's great, that's huge, but you can also see that uh, this rocket consumes a lot of height and space and probably has a high burden because of that. As you can see we have six, 17 uh, height slots available, but from the modules we will have 5 module burden added, so this is a bit of a downside to the large engine power. But still, this is a fast uh, rocket and also very decent to be used for any cargo to be transported. Let's also check the range and that again is the same with the other petroleum engine, the small petroleum engine. It's a distance of 10 tiles. You can travel with that kind of engine. So moving further to the only two engines I would use in the end game once you have reached it. The first one would be the Red Bolt engine. As the name tells you, you need to feed uh, Red Bolts into this engine. As you can see, the white slot here, that's going to be the target of your Red Bolts. And you will need quite a big amount to yeah, fully fu fuel it. 4000 Red Bolts is not, uh, it is quite 
a decent amount already, so make sure you have multiple Red Bull generators or whatever to transport your Red Bulls over there, otherwise the loading procedure will take forever. Then, as you can see, this uh, rocket is very small in height, but it only provides a maximum height of 20, so you have 12 slots available. Still enough for at least two uh, cargo modules. And talking about the engine power, um, we have 34 modular engine power, that's I'd say um, medium to good value already, so this is not gonna be your fastest, fastest rocket, but still you can uh, yeah, transport a lot of cargo from, uh, using it. So moving further to the last available engine in the game, that's gonna be the hydrogen engine. As you can see, this one provides a huge power, engine power of 55, but it will require some additional modules. I reckon to have a liquid fuel tank, and also you need a liquid oxidizer tank. As you can see from the plumbing here, you will need liquid hydrogen as a fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer added to these rockets and therefore you will receive a range of 16 tiles I figured out that it doesn't actually change anything if you have one or two uh, oxidizer tanks if I just remove one oxidizer tank the trip distance is still at 16 map maximum so no change there you can so I, s I I'm suggesting you go with one tank because that's uh, l less burden to the engine and therefore it will travel faster. So uh, comparing the range to the Red Bolt engine, the Red Bolt engine has 20 tiles range which is probably the best for any long travels but um, your hydrogen engine will provide extra height so you can attach more modules to this rocket. So if you <laughs> are going for a large mission or want to transport a lot of materials you should probably consider going for the hydrogen engine as, lo as it's also going to be the fastest in the game. So which engine to use in which part of the game? Now that's kind of the question. Well for the start of the game I would yeah, I would go with the carbon dioxide engine. That's uh, a gas you have always access to no matter what your starting biome or your starting asteroid actually is. And that's kind of an advantage over the sugar engine because sometimes you won't have sugar. Con I, but anyway, I consider these engines pretty, pretty much the same. But yeah, as I've already t uh, told, it's easier to obtain enough carbon for your traveling. So make, you, make use of the carbon engine in your early game I would say. In mid game I would say uh, go for pre maybe the best engine would be the small petroleum engine as it provides a decent amount of engine power and also a good amount of slots available for, available for some transports. Now for the end game engine uh, it's a bit more complicated. I mean, if you have easy access to Red Bulls on your asteroid, you should always use the Red Bull engine, in my op opinion, because uh, Red Bulls in that case would be yeah, way way easier to obtain than the cooling procedure for liquid uh, oxygen and, and hydrogen. And also, in man on man uh, many asteroids, you have those wrecked satellites. You can check in the red radiation overlay, they provide a lot of radiation. So you can very easily obtain uh, a lot of reds from here just by using the red ball generator. Therefore, you will only pay a bit of power. Yeah, it's not, it's quite a decent amount still, 480 watts. Uh, yeah, to run your Red Bolt engines. So, yeah, if you have ex easy access to radiation, you should go with the Red Bolt engine. Maybe if power is not important to you and you also have access to super coolant, of course, uh, the hydrogen engine should also be an option. This one could also be used for automatic, any automatic uh, traveling, because it's yeah, probably fastest one and you don't need to check anything. Also it's quite 
easy to automate the procedures for um, pumping all the liquids in there while the radiation uh, procedure is not that easy to autom uh, automate and yeah also it will pollute your space biome quite quite a lot if you use to decide if you decide to use the red bot engine so to say so for the end of this video I think I've covered most of the stuff here I would like to have some kind of a group picture um, I'm assigning one tube to every rocket now and let's see if we can get uh, all the rockets started at the same time <laughs> we also need to set some targets uh, just randomly picking some here uh, of course saving the game now so go This one as well, the red bolt engine and the hydrogen engine as well. So you can tell from the animation that probably all of the rockets are ready to go. But anyway, I will pause the game for a second. Here we have some warnings. Why actually? Seems to me this, this one is fueled. So let's acknowledge that. Begin, begin, begin. Begin, begin, begin. <laughs> Let's zoom out and check what happens once I unpause the game. Almost all engines started. Some problem here. <laughs> ah, the crew did not arrive, probably. <laughs> okay, that didn't entirely went as planned. But anyway, thanks for watching this video. And goodbye.